thank God for his word, his spirit. Amen. We're going to begin this morning in the book of John, chapter number one. John, chapter number one, verse number seven. Elder Margaret and I, we have not discussed what we're going to be teaching on and uh, what we were going to be teaching on. And she have she finished up on Tuesday night. But <clears throat> what she has shared and some of what I'm sharing just coincide with what what has already gone forth. And uh, that's an indication to me that the Spirit of God really wants us to grab hold to what he's saying to us in this hour. Several weeks ago, well, three weeks ago to be exact, I started a, uh, a series of teaching in which I titled Developing a Kingdom Mentality. Developing a Kingdom Mentality. And just from the mere fact of, you know, me using the, the term develop, we understand that that's a process that, that, uh, that's involved in developing. As well as a mentality is just, um, in short, just a, a way of thinking. A way of thinking. And I, I need for all of us uh, to understand that apart from the word, amen, we're left to our own thinking. But what the word of God does is it brings to us or introduce to us a new way of thinking. Yes, yes. Amen. And uh, I don't know about you, but I know I want my way of thinking to be in line with. Amen. And to be in agreement with the word of God. Amen. I don't want to ever do anything knowingly uh, that is contrary to God's word. Yes. Amen. I have not done everything right, but I don't want to do anything that's contrary to or run counter to God's word. And uh, so the last two weeks, I have subtitled the message operating in God's kingdom, operating in God's kingdom. Now, child of God, let me say this. <clears throat> if there ever was a time. And of course, I'm emphasizing now for sure that we need to um, come to a place to where if you have not made the kingdom of God a priority, it's time to do so. Because listen at me, we cannot rely upon this world system. But here's the thing, <clears throat> if you don't apply yourself, if you don't make the effort, you know, where the kingdom of God is concerned, uh, uh, operating in God's system, then all you have left is to operate according to this world's system. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, and so <clears throat> that's not the will of God for us. Amen. Amen. God has called us to live differently. Yeah. Amen. I didn't say weird or strange, but he has called for us as Elder Margaret has been teaching, you know, the word to, to separate us. Amen. To sanctify us, to set us apart. Amen. From those around us, you know, who are not walking accordingly. Amen. Or walking in the light as he is in the light. Amen. So in the book of John, chapter number one. <clears throat> Here's what I want you to see, and I want to preference this by saying that, uh, no, chapter 17, one, John chapter 1, verse 17. I apologize if I say verse 7. Um, here, I want you to see something. Jesus introduced here to us a new way of living. Amen. I said he introduced to us a new way of living. In fact, I will go as far as saying he here introduced to us a different system as opposed to the world system. Now, notice what he said here. He says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. So we are now under, we are in the dispensation of God's grace. Amen. And, uh, and because <clears throat> we are in the dispensation of God's grace, then it is incumbent upon us now to learn how to operate in this grace. One of the things that come to mind quickly uh, when I say grace and uh, I think along this line of grace is, you know, we need to be aware of all that God through Jesus Christ, watch this, has already done. <laughs> Amen. We need to get acquainted with those things of things that he has already done. Amen. And, and so that we can enter into a receiving mode. Amen. And, and, and receive the things that uh, God through Christ has already done for us. But I do, I see verse uh, 17 as a means of which Jesus Christ brings to us a new way of doing things. Amen. Under this dispensation of grace. Amen. All right, let's look for a few minutes at the book of Luke, uh, chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. All right, here we go. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So now we see here that the kingdom of God does not come with observation. In other words, visually speaking. Then he goes on to say, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for the kingdom of God is within you. Now, I'm almost sure, I didn't see their face, but I'm almost sure that they were dumbfounded when he said this. Amen. The kingdom of God is within you. In fact, I like to look at it like this. <clears throat> We're in the kingdom and the kingdom is in us. Amen. Now there is a difference and maybe some may beg to differ with me on this, but there's a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is a place. Amen. The Bible talks about inheriting the kingdom of God, entering into the kingdom of God. But the, the, the uh, I mean, kingdom of heaven, I'm, I'm sorry. Now, but the kingdom of God is within us. Amen. Now that's good news all by itself. Amen. And so what I'm doing is, I'm going to be doing, is showing you and talking to you about now how to operate in this kingdom. Because the truth be known, it's just not enough to know that the kingdom is within me. Amen. I'm not, I'm not uh, downplaying that, but it, it's more to it than that. Because it is the will of God. Well, let's look at it. Uh, let's look, if you will, at Matthew chapter number five, verse 48. I believe that's the last verse in Matthew from the message translation. Matthew chapter five. Yes. Verse 48. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. So God wants us to grow up. Amen. I, I, it just is, you know, impossible for me to skim through that without emphasizing the importance of you and I growing up. And again, it goes back to what I started saying from the beginning. Apart from the word, there is no growing up. Amen. So growing up is growing up spiritually. Yes, he wants us to, you know, to obtain knowledge. Amen. But spiritually speaking, he wants us to mature. He wants us to grow up. Watch this. Why does he want us to grow up? Because you are kingdom subjects or kingdom citizen. Yes. Amen. We're kingdom citizens. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. 
glory to God. I, Ellen Margaret used the term dual citizenship. Amen. Uh, but, but I am physically, I am a United States of America, America citizen. But spiritually speaking, amen, I am a kingdom citizen. Amen. All right. Now, watch this. He says, now live like it. What's he saying here now? He's saying act like it, live like it, talk like it, walk like it, carry yourself like it. Now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. God wants us to live out our God-created identity. Yes, the kingdom is within me. Hallelujah. But now our identity, now because, see now, because we're kingdom citizens, we now, listen, we now have a new identity. Amen. Amen. I'm everything the word says I am in Christ. I can have everything the word says I can have. I can do everything that the word says I can do. And this new identity, you're going to find, <clears throat> based upon our feelings, the way things have been going in our lives, it runs contrary to what God says. Amen. But God is saying here, he's saying, live out your God-created identity. Amen. Well, I just don't feel. No, if this, ain't, this has absolutely nothing to do with the way you feel, but rather it has everything to do with what God has said about you and I. Amen. So he's saying, live out your God-created identity. Live, watch this, generously and graciously toward others the way God lives towards you. Hallelujah. So God is, is emphasizing to us that we are to live like kingdom citizens. Live our identity. Amen. Live in a way, listen, that amounts to being different perhaps than those who are around you and I. Amen. I, I saw something the other day at work. And uh, I, I just got to admit, I mean, you know, that uh, I saw someone do, and I'm being careful about this because I, the people I work with watch the, bro watch the broadcast. So, uh, so I don't want to use any names or anything, but, um, but I saw a gentleman, a man, I don't know what he said, but evidently he disrespected the supervisor, female. And he walked away, and I heard him mumbling something, walking away. And uh, evidently, he was very disgruntled. He was very dissatisfied. And, you know, and, and because, you know, after the hurricane, uh, you know, people were very, uh, you know, it was different. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you know, especially at, you know, where Lowe's is concerned, generators and all kinds of stuff. Well, people seem like everybody migrated to Lowe's in that area. And so there was a lot, it was tense, it was a lot of pressure. And so this gentleman passed by me grumbling something, and this supervisor came out and she said out loud, she said, I'm sorry. And I said to myself, you know, <laughs> hey, Shanda, Shanda, at best, at best what I would have done, <laughs> what I would have done is just say nothing. But I applaud her for the way that she handled that. Now, I'm just going to admit, I don't think I would have handled it that way. <laughs> I just, I'm just being honest. And I said, at best. But she, she, she did. She, 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 I mean, it was loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, after all that, the dust had cleared and everything got back to somewhat normal. I went to her and I told her, I said, you know what? I, I saw something that, you know, that really brought me conviction. Because I, I just, I just, I, I just, I'm getting better. But I just, it's just, I, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm a work under construction. Um, but, um, but just see the way she handled that. And the, the what, reason why I'm emphasizing this is because God is calling for us to live and to be different. Amen. And you know what? You know, we don't have to act like the world. Amen. We don't have to act like the world. 
We don't have to do things like the world <coughs> that are contrary to the word, of course. You know, we don't have to carry ourselves like the world, dress like the world, you know, and, and take our cue, as it were, from the world. We don't have to do that. Amen. But you know what? <clears throat> we need to let the word separate us. Now, how is that going to happen? Well, if we become doers of the word and not just hearers only. Amen. The word will separate us. But you know what? We got to continue in the word. Amen. We got to continue in the word in order for the word, you know, to. Uh, you know, to bring about the difference that I'm emphasizing here. So, um, the, to develop a kingdom mentality is going to take getting the word and renewing our minds. Why? Because all of our lives, watch this, we have been trained to operate according to the world system. That's the way we've been trained. I mean, now, granted, I know none of us have said, well, you know, I teach me how to operate in the world system. You know, it's just by default. We just flow right into it. And and before Christ, that's all we knew. I mean, our parents taught us certain things, you know, and thank God for those, you know, who were born again. You know, and perhaps were teaching us and wasn't saying, you know, well, let me teach you God's system and the way God operates. But were teaching us godly principles and things that amount to amounted to God's system and his way of doing things. Amen. So we've been trained. Listen, according to the world's system. However, we must unlearn those old ways and habits and receive a new way of doing things. Turn, if you will, to Romans chapter 2, 12 rather, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 from the Amplified uh, Translation. Romans chapter 2. <clears throat> Excuse me, Romans, chapter, Romans chapter 12. Verse 2 from the Amplified Translation. Do not be conformed to this world. Well, now, now listen. Now, this is the Spirit of God telling us, people of God. And, and I, I know many of you are, if not all of you know this, God is saying. But it's something about when you see it, as opposed to quoting it, to me, that it has a more, more of an impact. Notice he said, do not. Be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. But be transformed, changed by the, re by the entire renewal of your mind. By its new ideas, new ideas, and its new attitude. So that you may prove for yourself, for yourselves rather, what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you or for us. Now notice the word new ideas and new attitude. Amen. See, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. But new ideas <coughs> and new attitude is really emphasizing when the word of God begins to take effect in our lives in terms of being doers of the word. Our ideas begin to change. The way we saw things, you know, or were seeing things prior to coming into the knowledge of Christ. We see things differently because we want our thinking to be in line with God's word. Amen. And yes, it can be. The Bible said that we have the mind of Christ. We can, listen, we can think in line with God's word. Amen. Amen. And we can pull down those or cast down those imaginations and those thoughts. Watch this, that are contrary to the word of God. Yes. But in order for me, you and I to cast down those imaginations and every high thing that would exhort itself against the knowledge of God, we have to know what the word says. Otherwise, how are we going to cast them down? Hallelujah. All right. Now, 
The kingdom of God's system, watch this, is a higher way of living. It's not a way of living that's beyond you and I, but it's a higher way of living. See, you can't play with this. Amen. It's a higher, let's turn if you will to Isaiah 55 and 9. Isaiah 55 verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, God is not saying, listen, that his ways are beyond you and I, amen, uh, comprehending and walking in. He's just letting us know that his way, or ways rather, are higher than our ways. Amen. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen. Now we know that, you know, uh, that notice he said my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. We know that from a natural standpoint, from a natural standpoint, God's ways definitely is higher than our ways. So we're still talking about a system here now. And I want you to get this because I don't, I don't want to leave the, the, the emphasis of the uh, kingdom of God system that we should be operating in. But God's way, uh, God's way of doing things is a higher way. And we want the higher way. There are two kingdoms in operation in the earth at this very moment. Two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Now, when a person gives their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that God translate us, well, Colossians 1 and 13, he translate us out of the kingdom of darkness. This is what he does. Based upon the decision that I have now made to receive or accept Jesus Christ in my life. Colossians 1 13 says you have, no, Colossians 1 13. The Father have delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness. So that means that if we come out of it, that means that at one time we were under the control of the dominion of darkness. <laughs> but he has delivered us or drawn us out to himself out of the control of the dominion of darkness and have transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Let me, let me see this in the King James Version. Who have delivered us, the word delivered there simply means to rescue. Who have rescued us from the power of darkness. The New Living Translation says the kingdom of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. So, so there are two kingdoms in operation in the earth today. Amen. At this very moment. All ideas, all beliefs, all methods of operation fall under the category, amen, of one of these kingdoms. All our ideas, all of our beliefs, all of our method of, of doing things fall under one of these uh, kingdoms. And I might add, there are no gray areas. Have you noticed because, the, because of the word, your ideas, your beliefs, and even the way you used to do things are changing? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, all of us can attest to things that, you know, that used to be an idea that you had. And now that you've come into the saving knowledge of Christ, now that you have purpose to do things the way God would have us have you to do them. So those ideas are changing and many of them have changed. So what about our beliefs, things that we believed? And now that we've come in contact with the word of God. <laughs> Amen. Now our, our belief system, we're, we're changing our belief system, but specifically there are areas of our lives that we no longer believe that way. Because we've learned better. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. 
Every message. Now, this is what God said to me this morning. And I never saw this until he emphasized it to me this way. Every message that you have heard or been taught that is biblically sound has been God's design to teach and to train us how to live in the kingdom of God's system. Now, granted, none of us is gives up and say, okay, I'm fixing to teach you today how to operate in the kingdom of God's system. But think about it. Every message that you have heard now, and notice I said biblically sound. <laughs> I must back up and emphasize that. Has been strategically designed by God. In his effort to train us and teach us how to operate in the kingdom of God's system. Hallelujah. We constantly, and I always quote this, but then when I came in contact, you know, with, with you know, the kingdom of God's system and began to think to that end, the, you know, where the scripture says, you know, that uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So God wants us to live and as we purpose to live our lives, watch this, by the word, of, uh, by the word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Guess what's happening? We are lining ourselves up with operating in the kingdom of God's system. You know, we just this year alone from this pandemic, this racial tension. Racial injustice and all the other stuff that's ra racial. And recently, the, the hurricane, you know, power outage and all of this. You know, I don't know about you, okay? But I know the law is keeping me. <laughs> you better hear what I'm saying. And if you hadn't given thought to that or to that end, let me remind you, the law is keeping you. Because, see, even in the midst of all this stuff that we right now or have been challenged with, and a lot of this racial tension and, you know, this pandemic, this is still going on. Amen. The, the storm has passed. <laughs> but notice, these things are still going on. And yet the word of God, listen, is admonishing us, is commanding us. That our lives should be different. We should not respond. We should not react. The way that the world, listen, is reacting and responding. You say, well, how, how should I respond? Whatever, however you see the world responding, do the opposite. <laughs> and, and again, I wish I could have done the opposite where the lady was concerned and saying, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, it just didn't work out that way. <laughs> As Christians, we are called to live. Now, you got to get this. I got to say this slow so you can, it can, it can you, uh, I'm having to take this and grind it up so that when it go down your windpipe, it will go down, you know, into your stomach. It'll go down smooth. You don't get choked. It don't get stuck. Okay. Notice. As Christians, we are called to live separate from society or separate from society standard, but not separate from society. We're called to live separate from society's standards, but not separate from society. Because if you live separate from society, you may as well just, you know, hibernate and going off somewhere, you know. But listen, God does not want us to live our lives based upon society's uh, the standards. And we know many of these standards. We're all too familiar with the standards. Amen. But we are called to live. Listen, we are called to live separate from society. This is the last verse that we're going to look at. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And this is where Elder Margaret and I ended up at. <laughs> John chapter 17. Verse. 
I really want to read all of this, but I'm just going to read. Let's, let's look at verse 16. They are not of the world, of the world, of the world. What does that mean? They are not of the world. That means that we do not conform to the world. We, we do not react. We do not respond. We don't care ourselves. Listen, according to the world's standards. Let's go on. Even as I am not of the world. Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy truth. Well, the, well, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. We're going to stop right there. The word of God. We need, listen, we need the truth. And I'm not talking about the truth that you just so excited about and, 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 you know, you get all worked up about. I'm talking about the truth that may run counter to your way of thinking. The truth that may not be so good coming, coming across to coming over to you. But listen, it's the word of God that will enable us to live separate from society. And its way of doing things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His way of doing things. And all these things, those things that prior to verse 33 shall be added unto you. God wants to add things to us. But the prerequisite is, in closing, the prerequisite is we got to seek first the kingdom of God. This is not a one-time shot, people of God. This is an ongoing process of you and I seeking first the kingdom of God. Amen? Operating in the system of God. My time is up.